24 hours, I'm going to be charged with embezzlement. You're saying that that man, that gentle, loving, gentle man, just went out one day and made a dirty picture? <laughs> Please find out who did it. Find whoever it was that killed my husband. I will, Betty. I promise. <laughs> Look, John, this is police business. Whoever was blackmailing Frank Newman will get him in the end, but you're really pushing things when you ask for something like that. I think I'm going into the porn business. Well, I, I don't know yet. I smell coffee. Cheers. Good health. A long life. not with you. John would have loved to have seen him. Ah, oh, he's so busy, poor love. Never takes time off, even at home. Where is home these days? Still Australia? Perth. Frank, I can see you're desperate and I can see why. But suicide? There has to be another way. There's not, Steve. I've got no other cause. I need your understanding. That way I can do it quickly and easily. Frank. Frank, you don't know what you're asking of me. I'm asking an old friend to help me to die because I have to. I have to do it now. Within 24 hours, I'm going to be charged with embezzlement. Thank you. Oh, oh John, that was delightful. Thank you so much. It doesn't sound like you're off to bed. The night's just beginning. Quite right. We're taking you to the flesh pots of Boogie Street. Singapore. Personal call to Mrs. Betty Newman. Equatorial Hotel. Is it uh, true what they say? That all the beautiful girls are really men? That's what the sailor's saying. <laughs> Brandy. John Brandy. Fancy running into you in Singapore of all places. Fancy. Coincidental, of course. Of course. May I join you for a nightcap? Now I've run into you like this, there's um, something I'd like to check. It's quite unofficial, of course. 
that they'd like to have you back very much. Look, Colonel, ten years in the force is long enough, and I don't feel like being a cop anymore. Any plans? None at all. The little business I had here is finished. John, you haven't introduced us to your friend. Oh, I apologize. This is Colonel Thorpe. Colonel, Betty Newman from Australia. How do you do? Hope you're enjoying your stay, Mrs. Newman. Yes, yes, I am, thanks. And my friend and companion, Ginger. Delighted to meet you, my dear. Thank you. Mrs. Newman, there's a call for you from Perth, Australia. Would you like to take it here? It'll be Frank. Um, no, 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 I'll take it to my room, thank you. Yeah. Come on, John, come and say hello. Take care of the Colonel. Nice to have met you, sir. Say hello to the lads and uh, no more accidental encounters for at least three months or more. Pity. He's a good man. Of course. Oh, Mrs. Newman speaking. You have a call for me? Hi. Hello, my dear. This is Frank. Before you say anything, I want you to listen very carefully. What's the matter, Frank? What is it? Something terrible has happened. I'm not going to be with you much longer. Frank, you're not making any sense. What are you talking about? No, please. Just listen to me. I want you to forgive me and to understand that I've made provision for you. My insurance policy is worth $100,000 and should be enough to... Keep you quite comfortable. Cover all your needs. Frank. Frank, you there? Hello. Oh, oh, darling, I thought I'd lost you. It's difficult to explain over the phone, but in my safe you'll find a tape recording and a film. I'll explain it far better than I can. I want you to know I love you very much. All things must come to an end, and this is it, I'm afraid. Frank, we'll come down to Perth immediately. Don't do anything till we Frank, get there. Now, Frank, wait. Goodbye, Betty. Three first class tickets to Perth, please. Your first available flight. Sorry about rushing you, but I wanted to get Betty out of the airport as soon as possible. My name is Ogilvy, Steve Ogilvy, friend of the family. John Brandy, that's Ginger in the back. Brandy and Ginger? Yeah, well, it started off as a bit of a joke and we've been stuck with it ever since. Where is she? Thank you. 
Hey there. Oh, my God. It's the movie. Movie? What movie? You mean you don't know? Oh, no, of course you wouldn't know you. You wouldn't have heard. Betty, this, this film is the reason for Frank's suicide. It's in the papers. It's everywhere. What sort of film? Well, not a very nice sort. He, uh... Well, Betty, there's a new pornographic movie. And it's showing in every little sordid sex cinema in the country. And I know it's hard to believe, but... Frank's in it. He's the star. What are you saying? It can't be true. I wouldn't lie about a thing like that. Mm. This is the film? Well, I, I assume so, yes. I'd like to see it. Betty, that's not such a good idea. What do you mean, it's not such a good idea? I want to know the truth. The truth is as I said. Betty, I'm just trying to save you any further pain. You, you don't want to see that picture. There, there's no point. That's what everyone's on about, isn't it? My husband? You're saying that... That Frank, the man I've been married to for 30 years, who I know and who I love. You're, you're saying that that man, that gentle, loving, gentle man, just went out one day and made a dirty picture? No, Betty, I'm not saying it. The papers are. Tell me, what's it like, this picture? Well, I, I don't know. I, I haven't seen it. Then I think you should see it. I think you should. Are you sure you really want to? Yes, I'm sure. <clears throat> you know where we can get a projector on the screen? Well, there's a, there's a higher place downtown. I could be back in half an hour. Well, uh, you two look after while I'm gone. That's what we're here for. I thought we could all use a drink. Good idea. Betty, this tape's addressed to you. Do you want to listen to it along? I'm not sure that I want to hear it at all, but... No, not alone, John. I do want to hear it, but stay with me, please. Betty, by now you know I've disgraced you. But I've shamed us both. It's so much like a nightmare that it's hard to sort out in my mind what's real and what's not about the whole horrible business. No matter what you hear, or what other people try to make you believe, please know that I love you. I've never stopped loving you for an instant in all the years we've been together. I'd give anything to have you by my side right now, but I know I can never face you again. I need to tell you how it happened, how I was maneuvered into a situation I can't face anymore. Well then, Mrs. Henderson, if we can... It all started when a young woman came to the bank to open a new account and then asked to see me personally. It was a quiet morning and I was able to give her a little time. After her business was complete, she started chatting. I suppose I was a bit flattered that she took the time to talk to me. During the conversation, I told her you were overseas and that was when she invited me to a party. A charity party, she said it was, in aid of the deaf children. A Roman gala. Costumes would be provided for the guests. The ticket was a mask and cost $10. To be honest, I was feeling quite lonely with you away, and I allowed myself to be persuaded. It was like something out of a Hollywood musical. There was so much noise and movement. Everyone was wearing their masks, and there was an air of excitement, I suppose it was, about the whole thing. I'd never been to anything like it. The wine was flowing like water, and everyone seemed to be dancing. My hostess introduced me around. Those people there were all very friendly, and one young woman in particular was very attentive. She put a vine-leaf crown on my head and pronounced me emperor. 
I suppose it was because I was the oldest there. The photographer was roving around with a movie camera and everybody was hamming it up for him. I did too. There seemed no harm in it. It was a bit like being invited to romp with a lot of boisterous children. You forget about your dignity for a minute and romp with them. And it's fun. There was a big chair like a throne. And I was grateful to be led over to it and sit down. I'd had quite a bit to drink. My glass was continually refilled. I found myself surrounded by pretty young women, all chattering like magpies. Suddenly, things started to move in slow motion. I had some difficulty focusing my eyes. Must have been something in my drink. I tried to stay conscious, but I don't really remember anything more. another drink. No, better still, I'll make some coffee. Stephen! Hello, Veronica. How are you? Not important how I am. How's Betty? She's bearing up as best she can. Oh, I'm glad. I thought I'd come and see her as soon as possible. The longer she thinks about it, the harder it's going to be to handle. What on earth's all that? Well, you're not going to show her Frank's movie, sure. Actually, I thought his performance was quite creditable. I've always had a soft spot for Frank, but I certainly never picked him as the great lover. Oh, stop looking down your nose at me, Stephen. It was a joke, dear, an attempt at lightheartedness. And not in the best of taste, as usual. I just won't have you laying all sorts of gloom on Betty. That awful movie will be forgotten in a week. And I'm going to tell her that. Not today, Veronica. I don't think Betty's up to seeing people just yet. I'm not people, Stephen. I'm a close friend. And close friends understand. I'll tell Betty that uh, you were asking about her. I'm sure she'll call you as soon as possible. You sound as if you're in charge, dear. I am for the moment. You don't have to watch it, you know. I want to. Are you sure? I've told you before. I'm sure. Why would they... Why 
Why would they make him do something like that? Just a minute, Betty. I wouldn't jump to any conclusions. It's the editing, isn't it? It's not Frank we saw in those hardcore segments. He was doubled. Now you think about it. The times you could identify him, it was all fairly innocent. But when the pornographic bits were cut in, you never once saw Frank's face. The tragedy is, he probably never realized the trick himself. Having no memory of the night before, after being drugged. He probably thought it was him that did those things. There's no need to see any more, is there? No, there isn't. Betty, I know this tape you told me about is personal. But I believe we should hear the rest of it. When I woke up, it was morning. My clothes, someone had dressed me. The place was deserted and stripped of the party decorations. For a minute, I couldn't work out how I'd come to be there. I was very shaky and confused. You know what happened after that? A copy of a film was sent to me with a message that the negative would cost a lot of money. It did. After I'd exhausted our savings, I stole from the bank's trust funds. Anything to stop that film from being circulated. Then they released the picture anyway. I become a thief and embezzler to no purpose. For all sorts of reasons, I don't want to live anymore. Please, Betty, forgive me for what I've done. Goodbye, love. <laughs> Is there any chance that Frank's involvement isn't known to the bank yet? His personal overdraft exceeds his assets by about $20,000. And his superannuation entitlements have been suspended because of the irregularities in the branch accounts. They don't know yet how much is missing, but it's an awful lot. Over $300,000. Does he have any insurance? Yes. But Frank committed suicide. And the policy hadn't been enforced for 13 months. The insurance company isn't legally required to pay. Are you saying that Betty doesn't have any money at all? That just about sums it up. But the house is clear. And Frank was my best friend. Betty will be all right. I'll see to that. I think we ought to stay here with Betty for a few days. Oh, John, please do. Suicide. To drive a man like Frank into dishonesty is to kill him. I know he took his own life, John, but he was murdered. Please, please find out who did it. Find whoever it was that killed my husband. I will, Betty. I promise. It's a terrible thing. Frank Newman was a good man. The way you read it in the papers, you'd think he was Jack the Ripper. How long did you know him? Oh, for about 10 years. My company did business with his bank, but that wasn't the important thing. We were friends, close friends. And you? Many five years ago in Hong Kong, for mutual friends. But you're right, he was a good man. Then who? That's the question I ask myself over and over. Every man has his enemies. Oh, every bank manager has a disgruntled customer or two, but enemies? Frank had none that I know of. Except one, Kenneth Jarvis. Who's he? Professional gambler and bookmaker. Frank refused to provide him with short-term finance at a time when he needed it. Nearly put Jarvis out of business. I'd like to talk with this Jarvis character. I thought you'd retired. Well, I can retire again after this is over. All right, then. When do we start? What do you mean, we? I mean we, as in us. Good to have you back in Perth, John. Nice to be here. I wish you were under more pleasant circumstances. So do I. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? I like Newman. Well, that's why I'm here. I'd like to get some help. Well, there's not much I can give you at the moment, except to say that we've got the case well in hand. Come on, Bill. I need more than that. Frank Newman was a good friend of mine. He must have been. You're pushing a bit hard. All right, what do you want to know? Tell me about the picture. How was it distributed? All theater people come up with the same story. Some man, a stranger, turned up one day with a print and offered to sell it cheap. They suspected it was smuggled in from overseas, but what the hell? The price was right, they took the risk. Well, how about the people in the film? Any of them known to you? We've been through all the mug books and none of them match up. For all we know, the entire cast and crew were imported from interstate. Trouble is, it'll take time to check out. 
When I read about it in the papers, I just couldn't believe it. I mean, Frank, of all people. I still don't believe it. I never will. Oh, I don't know. Where this smoke goes. Aren't you being a little cynical, Ronnie? And why not? You know me, I've had my fingers burned often enough. Two husbands, both of them failures. Well, I've given up looking. But, Ronnie, let's talk about something else. You can think what you like, but I know. There's something else, Bill. Oh, yeah? I hear you found a recording in Frank's office of a phone call with the extortionist. Well, we got the tail end of one, but the voices were heavily disguised. You know, the words were spoken very flat, without any expression. You couldn't even tell if it was a man or a woman. That's what I want to talk to you about. Don't say it. You want a copy, right? Look, John, this is police business. Whoever was blackmailing Frank Newman, we'll get him in the end, but you're really pushing things when you ask for something like that. Okay, well, say I'll fix it, will you? Come and have lunch. I'm starving. members, would you like the introduction to be formal? Well, the more accidental, the better. as I get older. No problem. Didn't spill anything on you, did I? No, no, that's all right. No. Uh, don't I know you from somewhere? I don't think so. Anyway, my name's John Brandy. I must have uh, run into you somewhere, I swear. Racetrack, perhaps? Oh, yes, yes, could be. I've been known to back the odd horse now and then. Of course. Kenneth Jarvis. That's right. Can I get you another drink? Oh, no, thanks. No, I'll stay with this one. Well, uh, perhaps we can drink them together, then. Why not? Well, what kind of business are you in, um, John? John, that's it, isn't it? That's right, yeah. <laughs> well, I dabble in everything. Providing there's some money out of course. Ah, man after my own heart. But things haven't been too good lately. This town's screwed down pretty tight. Oh, yes, I know how you feel, friend. You've been there too, huh? Oh, a couple of months ago. But I'm all right now. Weren't you involved with a bank? Bank manager was backing you or something? <laughs> that bank manager was Frank Newman. You know, the guy getting all the headlines now? He wouldn't lift a finger. He's cashed in his chips now. Couldn't have gone better if I'd planned it myself. Really? going into the pawn business. This is Ken Jarvis. Get me Bernie Crawford. Mr. 
Mr. Crawford. Crawford, there's this guy in town calling himself Brandy. Yes, that's right, as an alcohol. He's running around asking questions about Newman. I thought you should know. Well, who is he? What does he do? Well, I don't know yet. I smell cop. You should pass the word on to Lord Ads in case he comes nosing about. I might just do that. Thanks for the information, Ken. I won't forget it. <laughs> I won't let you forget, man. Bye now. Go. He's coming along. I met this Kenneth Jarvis character. What's he like? Well, he's affable, easy to talk to, shrewd, and hard as nails. Does he suspect you? I certainly hope so. I'm clumsy enough. If he's our man, he should do something stupid. What's your day been like? Pleasant enough. Well, what have you been up to? Absolutely nothing. Really? So this is what you get up to when I'm out, is it? Well, I've got to do something. And I never learned to knit. Well, what's all this about? These people who go into porno movies don't come out of the legitimate film business. They're usually the byproduct of the vice rackets. Houses of ill repute, massage parlors, you know, this sort of thing. How would I know? Only superficially, of course, darling. After all, you've never really had the need, have you? I could go along with that. I think we should answer a few of these. The words, no experience necessary, seem to cover up a multitude of sins. I thought I told you to stay out of this investigation. I was only offering up a suggestion. Can you come here a minute? What does that look like to you? Tattoo. Looks like a shamrock. <laughs> to yourself. Oh, don't you like the transformation? I thought I looked rather lovely. <laughs> I hope I get as big a reaction where I'm going. And where's that? The less you know, the less you can tell. Ginger, you're not going to do anything stupid, are you? Don't worry. I know what I'm doing. I'll be as safe as houses. Will you be all right here by yourself for a while? Yes, of course. Besides which, it's something I've got to get used to. I'll be back in about an hour. And uh, what do I tell John? That I'll be back in an hour. Want me to get that? No, no, it's all right, Ginger. I'll get it. Hello, Ronnie. Hello, darling. Just thought I'd drop in and see how everything's going. I'm not intruding, am I? Uh, no, no, of course not. Oh, good. Dying to find out what's going on. Yes, 
be unusual for women to have tattoos. Now, there are more and more all the time. You get many requests for shamrocks. Shamrock? Yeah, small ones, well, about here. Sometimes. Keep any records on your clients? In this business? Don't be silly. Would you remember a girl you may have tattooed a small shamrock on? No. I don't remember anyone like that at all. Could have been someone else. We're not the only people in the business. Could be right. Where do you think he's going? It's only half done. Don't worry, sport. Only cost you half price. job in the paper I rang up before all right darling we'll just come in then leave your things in the dressing room Glasses, yes, good idea. Come on, that's right. Hold it. Right, now just lips a bit, just wet and moist. Tongue a bit out, bit out. That's it. That's it. Not too much. Another one. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Darling, not now. You can see I'm busy. Just go back there and sit down, will you? Right, here we go. Right, there, darling. Right, that's it now. Yeah. Wet them up a bit. That's it. That's it. Nice. Good. Good. Good one. That's it. Lovely. Okay. Now take it off, darling. Eh? Take the. Ah, nice. Good. Push. Yeah, thrust a bit. That's the one. That's it. Hold it steady. Hold it. Good, good. And again. And again. Here we go. That's the one. Right. Lovely. Lovely. Yes. And again. And again. Good, good. Good, good. Right, and that's it. Done. Okay. Listen, darling, I thought I told you to leave your things in the dressing room. Your clothes, darling, your clothes. Listen, no one need you consider taking you on my books unless you're prepared to take your clothes on. We don't right here, surely. Cooperation, that's the name of the game. Now, you need a little help from me, I need a little help from you. Unless, of course, you're not really interested in being in this industry. Oh, but I am. I need the money badly. That's exactly the point, darling. How badly do you need the money? That badly. Well, I'll warn you from the start, you'll have to be a little more flexible in your approach. Well, 
that guys. It's a little more like it. Professor Patterson? Oh, please forgive me. John Brandy. Yeah, that's better, isn't it? Brandy, you said? That's right. Oh, yes, of course, I was expecting you. Something about voice print, wasn't it? That's right, sir. Please, don't be so formal. Don't call me sir. Just call me Professor. Now, what do you want to know? I have a sound tape here that a friend of mine recorded of a telephone conversation. And your question? I'm a bit rusty on the theory of voice prints. Voice prints are not so definitely identifiable as fingerprints. It's conceivable that there might be two or even 20 people in the world with roughly the same vocal pattern. However, the likelihood of them being in the same place at one and the same time is about a million to one. Now, if I should get a tape recording of the same voice, how possible is it for you to be certain it's the same person? Quite possible, really. And if the voice has been muffled or distorted, to prevent identification. Ah, my boy, my little machines are too clever for that. They can see through all sorts of vocal gymnastics. I see. No, your best chance is to carry around a small pocket tape recorder. Record the voices of the people you talk to. Then let me have the tape, and more than likely, I shall be able to tell you whether you've had a conversation with that person before. I have to talk to someone. That's what I'm here for. It's about Steve. Doesn't surprise me. What do you mean? He must be blind. He's had a crush on you for as many years as I can remember. Nonsense, Ronnie. He's just a family friend, that's all. Yeah, all right. So what's the offer? Well, one of his smaller companies rang to offer me a job. Not a grand one, but at least I'd have an income. Sounds interesting. You sure there are no strings attached? What strings? Oh, how naive can you get? Oh, hello, John. You all right? Yeah, I could use a drink. Coffee? Uh, something a little stronger, I think. Good idea. What happened? It appears that people around here don't like asking too many questions. What do you mean, he just let you go? He did. It doesn't make any sense. What did you find out about him? His name is Brandy, John Brandy, next Hong Kong police. Hong Kong? Could be getting mixed up in the drug scene. Don't want to know about that. What's he up to? I know. You should, that's what I sent you after him for.
Lynn's here. Let me speak to Bernie Crawford. Crawford? Yeah. What? Listen, who is this guy? He's in town five minutes and suddenly we've got troubles all over. Yeah. Well, he's getting too damn close. I'll tell you what we'll do. Is Brandy back yet? He's just cooling off in the pool. Oh, thank goodness for that. Gives me a chance to sneak up and change. What a good idea. What's she all dressed up like that for? Who knows? She won't tell me a thing. Ginger back yet? I came in about five minutes ago. Glad to hear it. So, what have you been up to? Nothing much. A bit of shopping. Oh, come on. Is that all there is to tell? Mm-hmm. Always tomorrow. Are you sure you're not getting in too deep? I can handle it. I'd feel much happier if you tell John about it. All in good time, my girl. It helps occasionally to show my independence. <laughs> Wish I was capable of showing mine. I feel so useless as if I'm not contributing anything. You will when you're ready. In one way, I think I'm ready now. For what? Ever I find out who got Frank into all this, I'd know exactly what to do. So, what have you been up to? Nothing much. For the shopping. Oh, come on. Is that all there is to tell? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's tomorrow. What have we got here? Tape recorder. I've got one for you, actually. What am I supposed to do with it? Record every voice you hear. I've contacted a voice print expert who says he can identify a man from the extortionist tape. We have to have a copy of the same voice. I know it's scattergun tactics, but you've got to gamble to come up with the right answer. Well, little fellow, that's you. Thank you. I think we'll have to come up with some answers quickly. Betty? I think she's close to breaking point. I can understand that. Been married to a man for 20 years. And then she finds out she doesn't know him at all. It's enough to break anyone up. What have you been up to lately? Following my own line of inquiry. I thought I told you to stay out of it. How can I? It's as important to me as it is to you. Well, let me know what you're up to so I can keep an eye on you. I'll do that. Good. Appears to ring the lot. Thanks. Do you know exactly what it is that you're looking for? Clue. Any clue will do. If you want to meet a man, then you're in the right place. What's your name? Uh, I was told I didn't have to use it. And of course you don't. You starting work here, are you? I think so. Well now, that all depends. Oh, Mr. Epstein, nice to see you again. Feeling all right, are you? A little bruised, but uh, I'm quite sure it'll all be worth the effort. I, uh... I don't quite understand what I'm doing here. I did ask about getting work in films. And you will, my love, you will. You see, the films they're making nowadays require the occasional bit of nudity, and uh, we just want you to be unself-conscious. So we put all our up-and-coming starlets through a short course as a masseurs. I see. <laughs> it's not hard work, and it's paid quite well, really, particularly if your customer likes you. 
I don't know anything about massage. Who does? We uh, have an expert here to help you. Peggy! My name's Peggy Malone, and I'm sure you two will get along very well together. Peggy, I'd like you to meet, um... How about we call you Jasmine? Jasmine? Why Jasmine? Because we've got a uniform with a J on it. Come on. We'd better get you stripped for action. See how this fits in. If it's not tight enough, you do your own alterations. <laughs> what a lovely tattoo. Into tattoos, aren't you? Oh, they look nice on other people. I don't know about on me, though. <laughs> uh, look, um, I didn't know I was going to be starting immediately. Uh, is it all right if I make a phone call? Of course. Just leave the money for the call beside the phone. job at the Lady Lilac Massage Parlour, but I've got to start right away. Can you come in and pick me up later? Uh, if you get a pen and paper, I'll give you the address. What's the matter? She keeps looking at me in a funny way, as if she's fascinated by something. By what, do you think? My tattoo. Oh, yeah. It does really single you out, doesn't it? Quite unique, really. Do you? I certainly hope so. Walk straight through. Hello, love. Well, you've got a choice tonight. There are two of us on. My name's Peggy. And this is Jasmine. Well, I think I'll take Jasmine if you don't mind. Oh, you win some, you lose some. What the hell are you doing here? Following up a lead. Did you notice her thigh? She has a shamrock tattooed on it. Hmm. The penny drops at last. Well, we'll take care of that in a moment. It's looking rather stunning in that outfit. We might as well get down to business. have deserted the sinking ship. Oh. Let's have a look around before we leave. Come on. Exactly what I wanted. I know I'm concerned with what you want. You went in boots and all. Do you realize we've got a completely capable and efficient police force, quite able to solve crimes without any assistance from you? Well, you know my reason. All personal and with nothing in common with normal police procedure. From now on, you'll leave it in our hands. 
that's what you want? That's what I want. Your lady's waiting outside in the car. She's had a rough day. I, I think you'd better take her home. That's exactly what I was going to do anyway. And that's all you're going to do? Not before time. It's just one more question. Oh, come on now. Honestly. It's just one more question. What is it? You did an autopsy on Frank, right? Yes, we did. What did he die from? An overdose of their cop. <laughs> What's that? I've never heard of it. It's a medication for a heart condition. If which taken in sufficient quantities with alcohol can lead to a hemorrhage and, and death. Now, will you go home? I'm going. I'm going home. You ready to go home? That's the nicest proposition I've had all day. But your lives must be in danger. Possibly. But they've had every opportunity to kill us if they want to. I'll get that. Tell me, did Frank ever have any kind of heart condition? Frank? No. Never had worse than a cold. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. It's Steve. Go on through, I'll be down in a minute. Thank you. Steve. Hello, John. How's the investigation going? Any new leads? Not really, it's a pretty slow process. Oh. I really came over to see how Betty's bearing up. Pretty well, considering. Why don't you take a look for yourself? Oh, thank you. I'd have called around before, but I thought it better to wait until things had quietened down. It's very nice of you, Steve. Hello, John. How's the investigation going? Any new leads? Not really. It's a pretty slow process. I really came over to see how Betty's bearing up. Pretty well, considering. Why don't you take a look for yourself? Oh, thank you. That's nice of Steve to always be around when Betty needs him. I know it's awful of me to say so. He's been so good. I don't really like him. He's a bit too eager to help, if that makes sense. Mm. He relaxes in his company. That's a good thing. I only wanted them to help me find out what made Frank. I didn't want to see them in any kind of danger. I get the feeling that they've been in danger before. And they're not showing any visible scars. Quite seriously, I think they're able to cope with things better than you can. After this is all over, I uh, thought we may go away for a while. We? Oui. Well, I hope I'm not taking too much for granted, but I'd be proud to look after you. Is it all right if I keep on asking? Yes. Strange, isn't it? That film was only made a few weeks ago, and now both of them are dead. And so could you be if you try any more damn fool moves like you did today. Yes, well, it seemed like a good idea at the time. There's nothing wrong with the idea. It's just that I like to know what you're up to. You see, stupid. I love you too much to let anything nasty happen to you. All right. From now on, you call the shots. I'll do as I'm told. Bunny? Look, I've just heard about the girl. The one that got herself killed. Now listen, chum, this started off as a sort of deal where you scratched my back, I scratched yours. But murder is not my scene, chum. I want to pull out as of now. You mean one more favor? I think I've done enough. Well, 
leaders. Ready and racing, Agilita got away smartly and also beginning well tapping the last secret battle was the outsider. Does this sort of thing happen to you often? Not all that often. No one can pick winners out of a hat every time. <laughs> Just as long as I'm around when you do. <laughs> Look, I thought I might organize a little party for us later on. What kind of party? Oh, the sort of party I think you'd enjoy. You amaze me. I never thought you'd go in for that sort of thing. <laughs> well, we all have our secret little vices. <laughs> yes, we do, don't we? Look, I've got a little bit of business to do first. Why don't I uh, give you the address? What time's the party? 8.30 suits you? Suits me fine. Cheers. Yeah. Good health. Long life. You are? One festive type tie. What's it all about? Well, I've been chasing up this Jarvis thing. And he's invited me to a party. Like the one Frank went to? Who knows? With any luck, yes. Well, I hope you're wearing clean underwear. Found anything? I thought you might find this interesting. You want to follow this up, or will I? Well, if you're going to be busy. Okay, leave it till tomorrow morning, and I'll do it. <laughs> That's if you're home by morning. I'll give you the address, and you can come look for me. Good to see you again. Tom, I got my own back. That's enough. For the moment, I want him to be able to listen. Nice party. You shouldn't have tried to fool me. I can usually smell police from 20 paces. I'm not a cop. But you were. You still act like one. to leave, will you, lads, before you start? My job's over now. It's over to you. Is this a stag party, or can anybody join in?
Sleep well? Well enough. Have you seen Betty this morning? Yeah, I popped in before I had a shower. Sleeping like a baby. Good. Ah, what's on today? You can take our tapes down to Professor Patterson. Keep you out of mischief. Me? You have your moments too, remember? I'm gonna see Ogilvy. I wish I'd never made you a porn movie in the first place. How did I know John Brandy would get into the act? It shouldn't be my problem. A nice little frame up, you said. A fat pie and no repercussions. Huh. No repercussions. I've had to close one parlor. I've had to waste a good girl and the cops are getting nosy. But it's gone far enough. What do you intend doing? What I should have done in the first place. Vince! Whatever it is, Bernie, you leave me out of it. I'm clean and I want to stay that way. Well, me, Mr. Crawford? Yeah. This Brandy character's too stupid to scare. Get rid of him. How do you want it done? What do I care so long as it looks like an accident? Call me when it's over and get going. So now you know. Can I go now? Gladly. Yes? Uh, I hope I'm not disrupting whatever you're doing, Professor. Who could care? Academics may be intellectual conversationalists, but they're not the prettiest race of people in the world. <laughs> Let me give you a coffee. No, I'm, uh, I'm right out of coffee. I could provide a little synthesized Beethoven, <laughs> if that would suit. Well, thank you, but uh, I really only came to leave these tapes for John Brandy. Tapes? Oh, yes, of course, I do remember. Tapes. <laughs> thank you. Pity. Are you going to stay whilst I muddle through these? Will it take very long? A couple of days, a couple of weeks. Depends how long I stretch it out. Perhaps uh, a phone call when you're finished? Ah, yes. If you would prefer, of course. Pity. I'm sure we have a great many things in common. <laughs> well, another time, Professor. I'm a busy girl, you're a busy man. Such is life. <laughs> Never mind. You, uh, you will keep in touch, won't you? Of course. I look forward to it. You're very kind, Professor. Thank you. Thank you. Charming. Quite charming. I do know what Betty's going through, and I don't want to get in the way. But I do want to help as much as possible. Well, that's what friends are for, aren't they, Steve? We've been friends for a long time. Yes, we have. Were they good times when you're doing business with Frank? Yes. Yes, they were. We were going through Frank's stuff, and we came up with this. Couldn't it be too exciting having your loan application turned down? Mine and dozens of others. Now, this wasn't any big deal. I simply made a request for a loan for an expansion proposal. Nothing critical. When the loan was knocked back, I just 
shelved the project. And it's still shelved? For the time being. Uh, another copy. No, I got a lot of things to do, a little time to do it in. I know the feeling. Anything I can do to help? Not really. Thanks anyway. My pleasure. I like I'd probably drown. What's happened, John? You look terrible. Went for a drive in the country. I thought country air was supposed to do you good. No, for me it doesn't. How did your day go? Very well. That Professor Pattinson, what a charming man. I took quite a fancy to him. For him to you, if I judge him correctly. He certainly seemed pleased to see me. Has he come along with the tapes? Well, he didn't exactly say when we'll get them. 
But I think you'll work on it as quickly as possible. Here. I'd like to speak to Mr. John Brandy, please. Tell me what this is all about. I'll tell you as soon as I find out myself. Yeah, what's it to be? Scotch on the rocks. Scotch on the rocks coming up. What are you having? Already poured. Orange juice. I keep forgetting you don't drink. Used to. I gave it up. We stay good. It's easy. Once you get the hang of it. Now, what can I do for you? You did say scotch, didn't you? Yes, I did. And what on earth are you doing? I'm willing to bet that the prints on this glass are identical to the ones found in Frank's study on the night he died. What glass? There were two of them. The one that Frank used and another one. And I believe the other one belonged to you. 
and these prints will prove it. Good Lord, John. All this to find out if I was at Frank's place the night he died. All you had to do was ask. Frank called me. He was depressed. I like to think I was one of his best friends. He had a problem. I thought I could help him with it. And? When I got there, he'd had too much to drink. He was practically incoherent. He wasn't incoherent when he spoke to Betty at Singapore. Well, he must have sobered up before he made that call. All I know is I was there for about five minutes, and then I told him I'd see him in the morning, after he'd had a good night's sleep. Satisfied? There's more. Such as? I can prove that it was you that extorted money from Frank Newman. Oh, you were clever. Voice muffled, flat. But the voice prints show that it was you that demanded the money to keep the picture out of circulation. I see. I can guess what really happened that night. He was at the end of his rope, bankrupt, an embezzler. He'd met every demand you'd made, and yet you still released that picture. You wanted him to commit suicide, so the police wouldn't ever come to your door. In desperation, he asked you, an old friend, for advice. I'll bet you were very sympathetic. All right, I'll give you two of my family. You even discussed all the alternatives with him. And then when he asked you for some pills to kill himself with, you allowed yourself to be persuaded. You gave him the means and then left him to kill himself. There's not very much I can say, is there? Not really. The prints on this glass prove you were there the night he died. The voice prints prove you were the extortionist. You had ready access to the tablets that killed him. So the prosecution have a pretty good case to nail you on murder. And I'm going to stick around and make sure they do that. I don't think you're going to tell anybody anything. Other people know about this. You can go ahead and kill me, but it'll we'll catch up to you sooner or later. Without your evidence, I may be charged with extortion. But murder? No way. John, look out! Are you all right? Oh, God. Tell you later. Take a lift. He's hot! Get a doctor! Don't die. Don't you dare die. It's difficult to believe. Isn't everything? What happens now? Well, Ogilvy's been charged with murder, and if the charge sticks, Betty will get her insurance money. 
That's not what I meant. What happens to us now? Well, Perth's a beautiful city. I'm sure there's lots of places we haven't seen yet. Indeed there is, and I intend to show them to you. Oh, no, you won't have time. What? I've got your schedule all arranged. Hairdressers at 2.30, then cocktails here at the Sheraton at 4.30. Oh, then a divine dinner with the most charming friend of mine is to be for me. Um, Ronnie, what about John and Ginger? Oh, good Lord, Betty. They're quite capable of looking after themselves, right? <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Then tomorrow, there's a stunning dinner party where, my dear, you will be surrounded by the most attractive men and every single one of them available. And then the day after that, I have a friend who has this simply splendid yacht. Now, you've never... You surely, darling, you haven't been for one week fishing trip to Rocco. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah, it's a fishing trip. All in the